we will be having, um, we'll be starting off with a study session. Um, Katie Kelly, our director of the care center, will be giving us an update on the care center. So are you guys all ready to, to go? Well, why don't we go ahead and have you start? <laughs> thank you for coming this evening. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me through this? Okay. You'll need to probably be a little closer to the microphone. Um, Is that better? I think so. Is that better? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Madam President, Governing Board members, and members of the Superintendency Cabinet. Thank you for having us here this evening. My name is Katie Kale, and I am the director of the Chandler Care Center, and I was invited to join you all this evening to share a little bit about the Care Center, who we are, what we do, and how we help families within the district. So thank you for taking the time to listen to us this evening. Um, as I move forward into the presentation, our agenda this evening will be, again, to discuss who the Care Center is and what our history is within CUSD, how we help Chandler families, what our funding and support looks like, and then ways that our community and you as governing board members can get involved in the work we do. So the mission of the Chandler Care Center is shown on this slide here for you, which is to promote student school readiness attendance and academic success. And we do that by providing medical treatment, social services, parent education programs, and referrals. I wanted to share a little bit of information about what that really looks like for us. So you'll see the graphic up here to the right, and I apologize, the yellow is a little bit difficult to read on the screen, um, but I believe all of you up here have it in front of you. Um, some of the ways that we do that is through promoting academic achievement through kindergarten readiness programs, keeping kids healthy so we can keep them in school and learning, supporting the whole family, reducing absenteeism by providing no cost access to our medical and dental services, helping kids focus in school by offering free vision and hearing screening, and supporting parents as teachers through interactive programs year round. I wanted to share a couple of quotes um, from some of our families who we have served over the past years. And I think it's really important to remember that at the core of everything we do at the Care Center is the community and the kids and the families that we serve. So what it's really about for us is people at the Care Center. Um, our programs make an impact on kids and they can make an impact on the entire family as a whole. So you'll see some of these quotes up here from moms and dads who have come through the Care Center over the years and used a variety of our programs and services. Um, from a dad who had a child in foster care who he ended up adopting and they were having difficulty accessing resources. And so they were able to come to us and he said in his quote here on the far right hand corner, um, that they, we, they were asked what did they need and they were treated with compassion. And that's really what it's about for us at the Care Center is making sure that when children and families come to us, we're able to treat them with compassion and with care um, and that we're able to provide whatever services we have available to them and then also provide them referrals for services that maybe for needs that maybe we can't meet within the care center. So a little bit about how we got here, because I know you're probably wondering, how does this fit into CUSD? And that's a great question. So the history of the Chandler Care Center. So back in the mid 90s, the district and the city and United Way and the hospital um, kind of got together and we're talking about some of the upcoming needs within our community, right? Um, how do we address the needs of some of our most vulnerable kids and how do we get kids in school? because um, particularly in some of our schools in our lower income areas in the district, absenteeism was becoming an issue. And we were having kids who were missing a lot of school because they maybe didn't have access to food, uh, maybe their lights were turned off, perhaps they didn't have a school uniform that was required, or a child got sick and they couldn't go to school. And so all of those partners came together and came up with the idea of the San Marcos Family Resource Center. So the San Marcos Family Resource Center was located at San Marcos Elementary School initially in a single classroom. And that opened in 1995. And what they were looking to do was provide some vital programs and services that would keep those kids in school and learning. That was uh, help with immunizations that kids needed to go to school. That was help with hearing and vision screenings. That was the occasional sick visit for maybe a kiddo with chronic issues like repetitive strep infections, those kinds of things. Um, and help with things like getting food and uniforms. Once the care center was established there, of course, it quickly outgrew. Um, you know, it outgrew uh, its space in terms of need within the community, because as you know, over time, Chandler also grew. 
And so our population of kids in our schools continued to grow and our population in need grew with that. So between 1996 and 2009, the San Marcos Family Resource Center added additional volunteer medical providers, food boxes, um, partnered with Dignity Health to provide a dental program, and um, also worked with United Food Bank to provide food boxes on a regular basis. In 2010, thanks to a capital campaign, the district was able to open the freestanding building, the Chandler Care Center. So we're currently located next to Galveston Elementary School in our own building that's about 8,000 square feet. Um, a lot of partners came together for the funding for that when it opened, and we're incredibly grateful that they did because it allowed us to expand our services so we could really continue to meet the growing needs of our community. Um, and those services I'll talk about in more depth as we move through the presentation today, but I just wanted to highlight them um, here. Those included a medical and dental clinic, a fully operational year-round food bank, a family resource center, a WIC office, and behavioral health partnerships. And then just a little highlight um, that's a little more recent here. In 2017, the Chandler Care Center's Children's Medical and Dental Clinic went ahead and obtained our 501c3 status. So the Chandler Care Center itself remains a program of the Chandler Unified School District, but our medical and dental clinic does have its own 501c3 nonprofit designation. Um, and that was a great move forward for us. It allowed us to really expand our partnerships and expand our fundraising models. I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get into the section on the Children's Medical and Dental Clinic, but wanted to mention it here when we talk about the history of the care center. So you may be asking yourself, Chandler is a pretty thriving community. What's our need for this? Do we really need to provide these services to kids within Chandler? And I wanted to share a little bit of data. Um, a lot of this comes from between 2018 and 2020. There's not a lot of 2021 data available out there readily. Um, but just some highlights of some of the stats that exist in Arizona, or in, I'm sorry, in Chandler and in Arizona that impact the kids within our community and really um, speak to the need for the services at our facility. So 63% of three and four year olds in Arizona are not enrolled in preschool. 8.9% of children, or sorry, Chandler residents live in poverty. 13.8% of Chandler children live in poverty. Chandler's population, this one actually really surprised me when I read it, increased 42.9% between 2000 and 2018. I guess we all sort of know that, right? The district has grown and the community has grown. We've had new housing developments going in, but that's a huge increase. And in fact, Chandler has consistently been in like the top five cities for growth in Arizona over time. Um, so I believe in 2020, we were the fifth fastest growth in any city in Arizona. An estimated 470,000, 23 children in Arizona are food insecure. Food insecurity means that those kids are going to bed at night and they may not know where their next meal is coming from. Or more likely their parents don't know, right? Because we're the ones that are worrying about it and staying up at night. 161,000 Arizona kids were uninsured in 2019. And 28% of our single parent households are below the poverty line in Arizona. So a lot of those stats you'll see hold true, even if they list Arizona specific, they hold true throughout the city of Chandler. And so, you know, we really recognize that there were a lot of ways that we could address those needs. Um, I want to talk to you about our programs and services and kind of go through them. I could talk to you for hours about this, so I, I won't, because I know you have another meeting coming up. So um, I'm gonna give you just a snapshot of each of those programs, but I also want to invite all of you to come visit the Care Center if you have not. I know several of you on the governing board um, have come and visited us in the past, and I would invite you to come back out again if you haven't in a while and really see what we're doing out there because I think seeing it in person really makes a huge impact. So the first program I want to talk about is our Family Resource Center. Uh, our Family Resource Center is partially funded through First Things First Arizona. Um, we do partner with Redon Chandler. I know Joanne Floth was at one of your recent meetings and they're an amazing partner for us. Um, and our Family Resource Center really focuses on a couple of key areas of support for families. We're really looking at serving in particular families from pregnancy through um, when the child enters kindergarten. So essentially birth through five and then also you know, um, expecting parents. And we are focusing on providing supports for those families that really encourage them to get in the community, to learn, to find creative ways to engage. Um, for parents, we focus a lot on parent education support groups and child development programming. So that's even talking, um, I always tell people, I, you know, I have two kids and so um, when my daughter turned two, I expected to have the terrible twos and didn't, and then she turned three. 
and nobody told me about the threes. And so I think it's really important for us, um, you know, as other parents and as other adults who have gone through this with kids, to have those resources and those supports for the moms, the dads, the grandparents, whoever that caregiver is in the household. Um, for our children in particular, we really focus on school readiness. And so that means early language and literacy programs. That means preschool science, um, art programs, music and movement. We have a 32-week um, program called Learning Together that we do that's a school readiness program that the parent or the caregiver comes in with the child and hand in hand, they learn how to integrate all of those different areas of learning um, with those three and four-year-old kids so they're ready to show up in our kindergartens and learn and kind of have some of those concepts ready. In terms of resources, we do provide access to a resource library and all of the other programs within the Chandler Care Center through our Family Resource Center. And we also provide referrals, which includes comprehensive referrals for programs, again, within the center and outside of the center for those families. So the impact is real for the families that we work with. Um, we have been a family resource center for more than 10 years, and we have provided services to thousands of Chandler kids and their families. And so um, I'm not gonna go into reading this entire quote right here. You can see it in front of you. Um, but actually, at this time, what I wanted to do was talk about how family resource centers really help us address a myriad of needs. So a child may come to us because a parent sees we're doing a free class with the Arizona Science Center. And that's great. And they get to come in and their child gets to build a rocket. But maybe while they're there, the parent is talking to one of our staff and says, you know, my kid is really struggling and I don't know why they can't read their letters. And then we can sit down with them and say, you know, have you had a vision test done on your child? Um, well, no, I haven't had that. Okay, well, let's give you a referral for that. Um, and we can really turn that one contact with a family into a variety of resources and referrals. Um, that's the, one of the great advantages of the Care Center because we have so many programs available. We're able to really wrap those services around that family and meet a variety of their needs. So I am actually gonna step away from the podium for a second so that I can introduce Jennifer Fletcher. Um, not the Jennifer Fletcher that you all know. <laughs> There was a moment of confusion about that, but, um, but Jennifer Fletcher is one of our um, previous, she was a prior client, actually. Her kiddos have outgrown our Family Resource Center program, thankfully, um, and a Chandler mom who wants to talk a little bit about her experience with the Chandler Care Center. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. I don't have slides <laughs> to look at like you do. Good evening, my name is Jennifer Fletcher. I'm a Chandler resident and a mother of five. My children currently are 11, 10, 9, 7, and 3 and a half. In 2013 or so, when my daughter, my fourth child, was born, my husband had recently become self-employed. Um, and we, like many self-employed people are, did not have our own insurance. So we, on a recommendation from our pediatrician, came to the care center for immunizations, which were provided free to our children. Because we were on, we might have been on some co-op that didn't cover well visits, it was some kind of emergency care. So it helped us to save on the cost of immunizations for our four young children, who at that time were four, three, two, and an infant, or three, two, one, and I don't even remember, as you can imagine. I don't have a strong memory of those days, but I do remember that we came to the care center. And as Katie was just saying, once we were in the care center, we began to see that this was a hub for different kinds of needs for us and other people in the community. At the end of 2014, the major source of income that my husband had abruptly dropped off. And at the beginning of 2015, we found ourselves with zero income and four small children. I homeschool our children, and so I am home with them all the time. So I was not able to go out and begin working full time. I knew the, chair, the care center had immunizations, and I also had a friend who said, hey, why don't you come with me to this class that's a pre-K class at the care center? I walked into the pre-K class at the care center with all the kids. And as Katie mentioned, we began doing pre-K, letters, experiments, activities. Oh, and in the lobby, guess what? Did you need help with WIC? Did you need help with understanding your SNAP benefits? I didn't know what SNAP was. We had been a 
employed white collar, regular old Chandler family. All of this was new to me. But when I found the care center, I had support with how, I didn't even know what WIC was, how to do WIC, which by the way is women, infants, and children. In case you don't know what WIC is, it's supplementary benefits for children under five that gives us access to things like milk and eggs and extra nutritional benefits. So we got WIC, we had food stamps, um, and we had the class. Well, sure enough, just being in the care center, soon we found out there was a food bank. So we were able to access the food bank to supplement our nutritional needs in our home. There's also fresh vegetables on Thursday mornings and other kinds of fresh foods that were there once a week. We were able to get Thanksgiving food, which is coming up this month, and we were able to get toys for our kids in December for the holidays. Each arm of the care center was able to impact our family in a positive way. And during these years that we were active in the care center, we also mentioned it to every other Chandler family we met who mentioned that they might have similar needs. Hey, have you checked out the food bank? Hey, did you know you can get immunizations? Hey, there's a class, why don't you come? More important though, than any of these activities or any of these food or meetings or support was the feeling that I and my children got every time we walked into the care center. We knew the people's names who worked there, Katie and Consuelo, and at that time, Joanna, and they knew us. They knew my kids' names, they knew my name. I would come in, oh hey, Mrs. Fletcher, it's so nice to see you. Do you need diapers? <laughs> yes, I do, size four, we have some in the back. One time Consuelo said, Jennifer, come into my office. Somebody has given us books, so many books. Please take some books home. So we got books, do you remember that? So many books. Another time we were in need of some clothes and Consuelo gave us a referral to an agency that was able to give us some clothes. Meet me at this intersection here, it's this place and we'll get some clothes. But we never felt in need, we never felt demeaned, or humiliated. It was a difficult time for our family as it can be for many Chandler residents. But it was never made to feel like we were being given charity. This was part of our community and they were happy to see us and have us there in any way that they could help us. But we never felt helped. We just felt encouraged. That is the singular magic of the Chandler Care Center. Not only does it have so many different opportunities to serve people in Chandler and that those opportunities intersect, but it provides support in a way that is encouraging and uplifting for people who may be more long-term at that uh, level of need or only temporarily. We, our business, thankfully, over the past five or six years has grown enough that we are able now to be self-sufficient in that business, and also the kids have gotten a little bit older, and I'm so happy to be able to come and speak to you this evening about the way that the Care Center has supported and encouraged us. I hope that you do make a visit to the Care Center um, to see this supportive environment that they have created, um, and I thank you for listening to Katie and myself today. Thank you. I feel like I should say I'm finished now because that was great. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Um, Jennifer, you may have seen, was pointing towards Consuelo Roa, who is one of our staff members who joined us here today. So thank you also, Consuelo. Um, and also didn't mention because she wouldn't mention it, but um, has also been in a position now where she's helping us with volunteering with some of our holiday events. So it's always great to you know really see the full circle and see those families as they work through that and um, do so well. And you know Jennifer and I are practically neighbors, um, and that was an interesting discovery also. So it's very nice to know that you have that level of community. Um, so in terms of our Family Resource Center, I wanted to just show a couple of numbers for the services we provided in FY21, which as most of you know, ended on June 30th. Um, 
FY21 was an odd year. I think we could all agree about that. And so um, we were really proud to be able to offer these services, even in the midst of working with COVID. Um, we adapted almost every single one of our programs to be able to provide physical distancing for families, to make sure that kids were, you know, staying safe and washing their hands and using the hand sanitizer and staying at their own tables with their parents. And um, it was a lot of work. And Consuelo and Brenda on our team, um, Brenda unfortunately couldn't be here because she's got little ones at home, um, did a lot of work to make that happen. So just a little snapshot of the services we provided. Um, Jennifer also alluded to our food bank. So uh, we do have a year-round food bank. Our food bank is open to City of Chandler residents who have a need at any time throughout the year. Our families can come to us once every two weeks to receive a food box. And um, in order to be eligible, they need to just have a Chandler address that's current and a photo ID of any variety. Um, we serve several hundred families a month in our food bank. And I'll talk a little bit about our holiday events as we get a, you know, a little further in the presentation. But as Jennifer mentioned, also, we do holiday assistance as well for um, our food bank families. And you can see in these pictures here, this was actually our Thanksgiving event last year, which we did as a drive-through at Chandler Center for the Arts. And the Willis Junior High and Chandler High um, kids in particular really came out and stepped up for us. And we're incredibly grateful for that. Our food bank partners with United Food Bank to get a monthly allotment of food. But our schools and our clubs and our churches and our community groups um, really help keep us afloat and make sure we have the food to serve those families. Uh, so last year, we provided 4,405 food boxes to 9,663 of our Chandler neighbors. Uh, we're also proud to be able to partner with CUSD's Food and Nutrition Services to do summer meals. Uh, we began that, I think, in 2012 or 13. Um, because Galveston Elementary was providing summer meals and they had a construction project. And so I reached out to the district and said, so you're not doing summer meals at Galveston, could we host them? And so we did, and ever since then, we've hosted summer meals for kids in our community. Um, regardless of whether or not Galveston is also doing them, the need is great enough that we're happy to be able to provide that service. In terms of our holiday events, um, we do have our Thanksgiving Family Assistance Day coming up, and you'll see some pictures up here from both our Thanksgiving and our December toy distributions. Um, our Thanksgiving event provides all the ingredients of family needs to make a Thanksgiving meal at home. We do that the Saturday before Thanksgiving every year, and um, we do pre-register families who live in the city of Chandler for that. This year, I think we have about 330 families that will be coming out to a drive through pickup at student services in the district. Um, and that's coming up on November 20th. And then our uh, December holiday assistance provides new unwrapped gifts and gift cards for anyone birth through 18. We did expand that. When I started with the care center, we had a younger cutoff age, but we felt it was really important to make sure the older kids in the family got that help. So um, if you are a person looking for a way to get involved, we always encourage gift card donations because teenagers like gift cards a lot. So um, that makes our job a little bit easier to be able to provide those to them. Um, we do partner with Chandler Fire. Chandler Fire's actually got a toy drive coming up at Chandler Mall for this event, um, and they're an amazing partner to us. Um, last year, they brought out the fire truck. You can see down there and did a whole display with it, which was really, really fun for the families. Um, and we partner with ICANN to be able to, to ensure that we can serve their kids through that program as well. And that'll be December 18th this year. So last year, we had 1,426 people who received Thanksgiving food boxes from us, and we gave out 4,000 gifts. That's not an exact number, sorry. We lost count at some point. But um, 4,000 gifts to about 340 families with children 0 through 18. Um, our community was so generous last year that we were able to give more gifts than ever to those kids, and it was just really incredible after the tough year so many families had to be able to do that. So. Um, we are, again, collecting for those events now, and I will we'll share that information at the end of my presentation. Um, so now I want to talk a little about our children's medical and dental clinic. Um, so we have a couple pictures up here. Um, the, doc the dentist up in the upper left-hand corner up here, Dr. Chait's on the far left, and Dr. Snyder and Dr. Creech, they have volunteered with us for years, and a couple years ago we were short on turkeys for Thanksgiving. So they left at lunchtime, and they came back with a basket full of turkeys for us. So it's one of my favorite pictures because it just really shows you the, the spirit that comes into that. So um, our Children's Medical and Dental Clinic, I'm sorry, let me go, actually go back for a second because I do want to talk about this. I mentioned that we're a 501c3 clinic. Um, we did obtain our 501c3 status for the clinic in 2017. 
And one of the great benefits to that is that we are now a qualified charitable organization for the state of Arizona, which means that individuals or couples who wish to make a qualified charitable organization tax credit can actually designate the care center to receive that and get a tax credit when they file taxes. Um, it also means that district employees are able to give back to us through our United Way campaign. And in fact, last year, district employees gave us $35,000 through the United Way campaign, which was enough for us to provide medical and dental care to about 700 kids. So it's really incredible the impact that that makes. Um, I also want to be sure, and I'm gonna pull this out because you know when you try and do this from memory, um, I want to talk about our 501c3 board really quickly too. I do have two of our board members here today, Kathleen Daller. Kathleen Daller works with Dignity Health, and some of you I know in this room know her already. Um, Kathleen was our founding board president. When we became a 501c3, she helped us with all of the foundational aspects of that to get up and running and be successful. So we're really grateful to Kathleen. Um, and Ed McClellan with Southwest Behavioral and Health Services. Ed was also one of our founding board members, um, and he was our board secretary um, for two years. So I thank them very much for being here. The remainder of my board members had family obligations this evening. So um, just wanted to introduce the two of them and thank them for attending this evening. I'm going to move on to our children's medical clinic. So our children's medical and dental clinic um, the building is set up in such a way that one side of our hallway is medical and one is dental. And so they really operate a lot in unison in terms of referring between the two programs. You know, you have a kid that comes into the medical clinic and they're having an earache and it turns out it's a tooth problem. We can refer them right over to dental, which is a great benefit to have. Um, our medical clinic is a no cost clinic for uninsured youth birth through 18 who either live in the city of Chandler or go to a CUSD school. So we do serve quite a few kids um, with medical services, and that includes preventive care, um, care for chronic conditions like um, kids that get strep repeatedly or uh, diabetes, those kinds of things, um, and non-emergent care. So we don't do uh, medical x-rays, we don't do casts, those emergency type of appointments, but we are able to meet a lot of the other needs that our kids have. Uh, we do partner with Dignity Health to do hearing and vision screening for free, as well as immuniz immunizations for children and adults. So kids who are uninsured or underinsured can be eligible for free vaccines throughout the year. Um, and then kids and adults are eligible for a free flu shot. So a little plug for that, um, that we do have that available. And we do this all through partnerships with both Dignity Health and private practice physicians. So we obviously could not do this without our volunteers. Um, we have had volunteers that have worked with us. I think our longest standing one is 26 years. Um, that he has worked with us. So we're really just honored to be able to provide those services. Um, I know that some people may wonder what this really has to do with education. And so I'm not gonna read through this because it's kind of long, but um, there are many studies out there that show the importance of healthcare in terms of education for kids. And really um, this particular study highlights the long-term impacts, not just the short-term, a kid went back to school because they got their antibiotic, but the long-term, that kid stayed in school and did better in school and graduated from high school and went to college and was able to give back in their community and into their economy. So um, it really helps create a more skilled workforce to be able to take care of these needs for our kids. And so you know, it's something that we think is really key and important and has been a cornerstone program of our center for years. Our children's dental clinic is a no-cost dental clinic for uninsured youth, birth through 18, again, who either live in the city of Chandler or attend one of our schools. Uh, we provide a couple of different things through this. Through Dignity Health, we provide a preventive care program for children. That's exams, x-rays, um, oral health screenings, oral health education, cleanings, um, sealants, and fluoride varnish. I think I got all of them, but there might be a few I missed. Um, and they do that through uh, affiliated practice hygienists who come in and are able, the hygienists are actually able to provide all that care on site at the care center. That started in 2008 when we were at San Marcos Family Resource Center and transitioned over to the care center when we opened the clinic over there. Um, and then if a kid comes in through that program, we identify a need and we say, hey, it looks like maybe they have a cavity or they need a filling or this tooth needs to be pulled. They get referred to our restorative program. Our restorative program started in 2013 as a partnership with St. Vincent de Paul out of Phoenix. And our restorative program provides um, fillings, basic extractions, root canals and crowns. And it also provides children access to St. Vincent de Paul and AT Still University's clinics if they need um, oral surgery or if they need braces or if they need something more complex than what we're able to deal with within our facility. 
Um, we also recently started partnering with NYU Langone University Dental School. Their dental residents are now coming to our facility to provide care, which is a really great partnership for us and for the residents because they get care, they get practice um, giving care to kids in a public health setting, which is a really important skill for them. So one of our moms said having to choose between paying for medical or dental insurance is always a headache. But the Care Center Dental Clinic was a blessing to me and my children. Um, we were able to take care of her children's hygienic and restorative needs and also um, refer both of her kids for braces. So just an example of kind of how those programs kick in to help kids. Um, last year, we did provide 1,798 medical services. That includes our hearing and vision screening and our immunization program. And we served 1,298 patients. And we also did 1,008 dental appointments between preventive and restorative for 598 patients. So that's quite a bit. Um, we could not do this without our partnerships and without our volunteers. I mentioned Dr. Chait earlier. He has been a volunteer with us for over six years um, and provided thousands of no-cost dental care to kids in our community. So we're just so grateful for those partnerships and for the ability to provide that care to those kids. Um, you know, if you've ever had a toothache and had to sit through a history class or a math class or a science class or whatever your hard class is, um, you know that that's really hard. And so to be able to provide this service is really life-changing for those families. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about our partner programs. Again, I could talk for hours, so I didn't. I put it on a slide for you. Um, so our partner programs are kind of listed out here. We do have Maricopa WIC, as Jennifer alluded to, um, Southwest Behavioral Health, which I'm actually going to ask Ed to, if he wants to join me for a, a moment to talk about their program and their partnership with the district. Um, we do car seat clinics and safety programs with the fire department. Uh, we work with Fans Across America to provide a diaper bank for families that are in need of diapers for their children. Um, so this slide really kind of shows you just a sampling of some of the partnerships that we have to serve Chandler kids and families in need. Um, again, we couldn't do it without all these partners, so we're really grateful for that. Did you want to join? I, I don't want to keep it out of Okay. I just want to say that. Uh, Southwest Behavioral Health in a partnership with the district has been tremendous. I mean, we, are, we started with the district in 2008 in two schools, and I think we're pretty much throughout the district right now. And my uh, plan for the district, I'm Ed McCall, Vice President of Community Services for Southwest. My plan is to grow the program in the district and turn off to the We're committed. I'm sorry. We're committed to the district. We're committed to the community. And uh, I just want to make sure that we continue to provide quality behavioral health care to uh, the community of Cancer, I mean uh, Chandler. Um, we are a licensed uh, behavioral health agency. Uh, we have licensed and certified uh, therapists in the, uh, in the schools and in the community. And we're actually on site in the schools in the, in the district. And uh, we're also operating, like, like I said, a licensed offices in the Chandler Care Center. So it's been, a, it's been a tremendous partnership. And uh, like I said, I want to see it grow and, and do more for kids and families. So thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. And uh, we just continue to work for the district. Thank you, Ed. So I just wanted to touch on, I think, three more quick things. Um, and then I will be done, and you can move on to your business meeting. Um, I wanted to talk about funding and support, because I know people probably think, well, you give a lot of free services. How are you able to do that? And that is a great question. We are actually able to do that in large part due to our partners and our volunteers. Um, if you look at our breakdown of our income sources, really our volunteer and, um, sorry, value of volunteer time and expertise and our in-kind is almost, it's just over $370,000. That's a lot of money that our volunteers and our providers, our doctors, our dentists, our food bank volunteers, um, are really kicking back into our community to be able to support the kids who live in our neighborhoods and who go to our schools. So we're really grateful for that. Um, we do also, of course, seek grants from, um, you know, we have a city of Ch two City of Chandler grants, um, and we have several private grants and foundation grants, and then um, we do fundraising events. So our fundraising events include, we're currently doing a 60K in 60 days fundraising event where we are encouraging people to make a tax credit donation to our clinic to help us raise some funds. Um, and we last year did a pie in the face contest, which was really kind of fun, maybe not for the people who got the pie in the face, but a fundraising contest for that where we had a couple of our principals who got involved in it, a couple of firefighters, a couple board members. Um, so that was really fun. So 
as you can see, the majority of our, our budget really does come from those fundraising opportunities. Um, we are able to provide these services because people give generously and because we have volunteers who give generously of their time and their expertise. So we are super grateful for those opportunities. And last but not least, um, I know that one of the questions we get most frequently is how can I help? And we are glad that you asked because there are a lot of ways that our community can get involved and help. Um, I wanted to just highlight the three that are coming up the soonest for us here. One I mentioned before is our Thanksgiving Family Assistance Day. Again, we have about 330 families registered for that. Um, each of them will get a turkey and all the ingredients to make their Thanksgiving meal. Uh, it ends up being about two large canvas reusable bags worth of food that they can take home for their family. Um, we are still collecting donations for that, and we are hoping to have those all in by the 12th, which is Friday. <laughs> I know, it's a quick turnaround. Um, but we will take them after that as well, because our food bank needs to be replenished after the holidays also, since we run year-round. Um, the next event that is currently running is, again, the 60K in 60 Days, which can help us meet our goal of raising $60,000 between November 1st and December 31st. Um, and I will talk in a moment about where you can find that information. And then our December holiday assistance, which again is new unwrapped gifts or gift cards for children who live in the city of Chandler and are in need um, or attend a CUSD school. We do help some kids who are in CUSD schools who are outside of the city of Chandler boundaries with that. Um, we have almost 1,000 kids. I know it says over 1,000, but we redid our numbers today and we're at about 1,000 kids um, registered for that. And we do request those donations by December 13th this year. The distribution is on December 18th in the morning. So it takes us about a week to go through all of those donations, sort them, bag them, get them ready for those families so that we can give them out on the day of the distribution. And if you would like to learn more about what we do with the Canyon Chandler Care Center, um, our, we do have a website that's listed up there, chandlercarecenter.org. You can find us on the CUSD website as well. Um, we have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, and an Instagram page. If you'd like more information about our holiday events, it's on our website under our special events section. Um, if you'd like more information about the 60K in 60 days or tax credit donations in general, that can also be found on our website. And that is all I have today. I think I took all of the time you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Um, you know, it's really amazing how much uh, you do for the, the care center does for the Chandler community and the students um, that are in it. And I, I know that um, many years ago, back like closer to even before you guys started, um, uh, there was some even history behind that where um, the late Eddie Basha brought yes. Camille down to Tucson to show her a program um, uh, that was similar to this that was being done in Tucson. And at that point in time, they realized that if kids have earaches, if kids have toothaches, if kids are sick, they're missing school. They're missing what they need to be able to be successful um, in school and graduate. And that if those basic needs are not met with children, they can't learn. Absolutely. And um, I think that this, is, this has been a great program um, for, our, for the Chandler area, the Chandler community. And we so appreciate all the work that um, you and the staff and the board and your volunteers have been doing. And um, gosh, um, it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Ms. Love? Thank you, Madam President. I just want to say thank you to Mrs. Fletcher for her testimonial. That is so powerful and so needed. A lot of people don't know the acronyms that you used and how hard it is to apply for things like WIC and making sure that your kids are getting their screenings on time. And so I think that's important to hear. Like, We have services out there to help families get what they need. And it's so inspiring to hear that you didn't feel like a burden. You didn't feel you know, anything but your community helping you, which is a real testament to the staff at the care center for being able to provide those services warmly. So I just wanted to thank you. And with that, we'll take a Madam few. Madam President. Oh, well, yes. Just, well, just one comment. Thank you so much, Katie and uh, Jennifer Fletcher. Thank you very much as well being out here. I, I echo that 
that comment. Could you just clarify the tax credit? Because we have school tax credits, yes. and we have the tax credit you're speaking of. You don't qualify for the school tax. I know everybody here wants to donate, mm -hmm. and I know <coughs> that there's people that are listening that may want to donate, right? Because yes. the great work you're doing. Um, would you just describe what that tax credit is again? Yes. Uh, so the charitable tax credit is a tax credit that organizations that serve primarily low-income families can qualify for in Arizona. And so somebody who's filing their taxes single in Arizona or head of household can make up to a $400 donation, and that money comes straight to our organization. If you're married filing jointly, you can make up to $800. Um, and that actually is different than the school tax credit, but the great thing about it is you can donate to your favorite CUSD school, and you can still also donate to the charitable tax credit in the same year. Um, so you can do those two donations. There's also a foster care tax credit, um, and I'm probably missing one because I don't have it written down, but um, there are multiple tax credits, and you can donate to all of them within the same year, and they don't compete with each other. They stack on top of each other when you're filing your taxes. That's great. Thank you for yes. clarifying, and thank you. thank you for helping us provide a world-class services. Um, thank you. If you haven't been to the care center you, and you need to be there, we will take care of you. But if you haven't been there and you want to see what services are there because you may want to have a warm, friendly handoff, please go through and visit, and uh, Katie will be happy to show you around. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll go ahead and start our business meeting in just a few minutes. <laughs>